What are you trying to do? I'm trying to reach it. What are you trying to reach? That spider web way up there floating through the barn rafters? Yeah. I don't think you can reach that high, can you? I want nurse I don't think I can reach that high. Oh wait, it's coming down lower. Maybe I can reach it now. Wow. Wow, what kind of spider made a web that strong? There you go. Are you gonna climb up it like Spider-Man? Yeah. Are you gonna climb up? Yeah. No, you just made it fall. <laughs> now you got it all in your hands and it's gone. Was that fun? I don't think that, there's no spiders on it. So don't be scared of it because there's no spiders on it, okay? You can just peel it off and put it over here on the table. Play with it with your feather. Because it has books on it. Oh, yeah, you gotta keep your hands just on the straw part of the feather so that you don't get mites. That's right, mommy was teaching you about how feathers have mites. And you don't want to touch it on your face and your hair because it could give you mites. Ew! <laughs> but you can hold it like that. That's cool. And look at my castle of oh. cars. Oh, what is a castle of cars? My goodness, Liam, that's quite a masterpiece. Wow, good job. Sister Ray, you you have lost your champion title for milking. You know you wanna know why? You wanna know why? I can tell you why. Because look how empty her udder is. She's drying off without my permission. She's drying off all on her own. Kitty is not drying off yet. So even though Sister A gave me almost a gallon at her peak at one milking, um, Kitty has the longevity that we're looking for of being able to milk a half a gallon for a long period of time. You guys are getting pretty comfortable coming in the barn, aren't you? What are you looking at? You think I'm gonna give you something to eat? Has daddy been giving you treats in here? I doubt it. I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. Ryan has been complaining that the ducks follow him around too much, but look at them cleaning up. They go underneath there and they get all the soldier fly larva. Oh, no more soldier fly larva to harvest. <laughs> ducks get it all. Yep, sad to say it, but I think she's at the point where it's not worth milking. Kitty gives me almost a half a gallon still, and then I was able to top it off with the little amount that she gave. So it's we're still getting like a half a gallon a day, but it's definitely um, tapering down. It's that time of the year where their bodies start to decline in milk production in preparation for Look breeding. At me. Look at you. So it's it's okay we, we try to go with the natural flow of the seasons with our animals so we are probably gonna stop milking sister ray just because there's no point in it it's kind of an extra step in the day um kitty's giving plenty of milk for our family use and time will be giving birth here in a couple of weeks so we'll have another goat in milk anyway so it's better to go with the ones that are giving us the most production for the amount of work we have to put into it and the amount of feed if we're not milking them we reduce their feed to have a smaller amount because they get extra on the milk stand they get as much as they get as much as they can eat on the milk stand pretty much as long as they're up here being milked we continue to add a little bit of feed if they're still being milked. Speaking of spiders, we have a big Halloween spider over here, otherwise known as orb weaver. It's huge and it's right here. <laughs> so I'm just kind of giving it its space. He has a pretty active family going on over here. I don't know. I mean, not those cobwebs up there with the dust, but if you can see right here, there are orb weaver webs with orb weavers on them. There's like one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten. I mean, they're just all in here. You kind of see that one. This one's moving around right now. Are these Dodgers? That one. Are these that one, that one. They're just that one. They're all in here. And they are kind of creepy. I'm not a huge spider fan. I am a huge spider respecter. Let's put it that way. I respect them because I know that they do a good job. But if one of those spiders jumped on me, I'd be screaming and smashing it. I don't like spiders in my house, except for the little long-legged ones that live in the corner and I allow them. No, 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 just time in heart. I allow those long-legged in the house, but I do not allow wolf spiders in the house. No, those are exterminated when I find them. Girls, hearts, your bowls, your buckets down here. Good girl, good girl. Time, you are looking good. You're doing great with your milk stand training. So as we get closer to her due date, other than the signs we've already seen, we're looking for this udder to tighten up. It'll get tight when she's ready to kid and any discharge from the vulva. But she's got another week or two before her due date. So we're not really looking for that right this yet, but about five days before the due date, I start kind of looking a little closer at them. Um, of course, the ligaments, like we showed you last year, right in here. Hers are actually not that, not that firm. They're actually kind of soft. So I might keep a closer eye on her. I don't want her to go early, but if she does, I want to be prepared and ready with handling any premature kids. Premature kids can be very weak and they could need to be tube fed. We have a tube feeding equipment this year, so I'm feeling more prepared and ready to deal with that. I have colostrum saved from last year if I need it, if for some reason she doesn't come into milk, but I'm pretty sure she will. She's, she's already got a pretty large size udder for a goat that's not near the due date yet, you know? So I'm feeling pretty confident about it. It's kind of sad seeing the boys are all gone, but they were yummy. We have this one that we took out because it was getting picked on and we thought maybe it's not a boy. We had one that was laying eggs, so we don't know. We haven't seen an egg in here since we removed it. Um, I guess we could go ahead and put it in the brooder and have more space for it. I'll do that. But for now, we're just kind of keeping an eye on it. It got its head picked, so that's why it's not been put back with the others. It's kind of been holding its one eye closed, so we want to make sure it's fully healed. Holy moly, came out to check the garden and oh my squash. Look at the size of that thing. I just picked all the big ones. They are growing great. They are loving this hot weather in October. I want to jump over the bed. You want to jump over the bed? Yeah. Okay. I can't do it. You, you can jump. You don't have to be scared, remember? You can have my help when you want to jump too. Oh, good job. All right, so today's ac accomplishment will be this bed being prepared for planting. We've got the weeds pulled primarily. Now we need to get the hard rake and rake it up into a hill and get it ready to plant. What I'm doing in this bed is going to be strawberries. That's right, strawberries. So I think, I like the idea of mixing some perennial beds 
a couple of annual beds and then a perennial bed and maybe a couple of annual beds and having having a good mix so we're going to plant the strawberries that were sent to us thank you for those and we're also going to plant the onions in between the strawberries as a way to save space and they're a great companion to grow together so just today uh, my plan is to get the bed ready for planting and then maybe tomorrow we can get some of it planted it's hard to get that big of a bed planted in one day with plants but we will give it our best shot to get a little bit done each day if it would just cool down in Georgia I could do a lot more out here I think but the heat definitely gets to me so I have to be careful with my timing and I don't have a lot of time during the cool hours to come out here those are the times where I'm really busy inside so um, or doing chores so I'm gonna hurry up and get the hard rake and get this taken care of now so that I can go in and do all my daily tasks inside, editing videos, answering questions and comments so that I can get through the day and have another video for you guys up tomorrow. Getting this bed ready to plant has an obstacle in the way. The weeds from that bed are falling over into this bed, making it hard for me to get to that path. So I'm going to have to either completely pull that bed first in order to get in here, or maybe just come in and do half of it to get it out of my way so that I can come in here and plant. Because right now I'm having a hard time even raking into the path. And the path has to be raked up into the bed so that the bed has all that good soil and the path is lower. So I'm going to have to come back out here tomorrow and instead of planting, I'm going to be pulling more weeds. Not really looking forward to that. I've been doing a lot of that lately. But I am looking forward to having a great perennial garden bed. Something else I'm planting in here as a temporary plant is some comfrey root starts that I got. So I'm going to be putting those in here so they can get started and then when they get strong enough I will transplant them into the hedgerow food forest that we'll have along that way coming in the spring. We have some other plants that I might be doing similar things with. Bushes and small shrubs that I will add to the garden bed as a temporary hold and then moving them to the main location in the spring. So right now we have three mulberry that are um, adjusting to the Georgia temperatures on the front porch and they're getting just a little bit of the morning sun so that they don't shock. So we may even put three big dwarf mulberry trees in here to get them started. So you never know what we're gonna do. We're always experimenting. We're always making things work the best that we can. And you know, if for some reason we never move those mulberry, this would be plenty of room for them. The only condition that would happen that would be detrimental to this garden is it would cast shade onto these three beds. And with these three beds being for annuals, usually they're sunny plants, but we could always plant our shade tolerant plants like roots and leaves like lettuce on this side of the garden bed and the sunny loving ones on that side and it would work out just fine too. So you can always fine tune and adjust your plans along the way. Don't ever feel like your plans have to be set in concrete because you can always change them at a later point. That's definitely something we've learned with trying to create a permaculture homestead is that you have to adjust with what the land tells you to do. Our first food forest we planted way down on the other side of the property and we did it the very same winter we moved here and it turned out to be a bad location. So if we had been patient and waited then we would have known that this would have been better for them. So as soon as these temperatures cool off we're going to move whatever we can over to here. Our Mary Lane seedless figs did not 
root. So I put them in this deeper pot and pushed them down lower to see if maybe they would. The strawberry verte are doing great. They are developing roots. You can see I can't pull them out because the roots have developed and they're sending out leaves. So I will be transplanting them before winter comes on into bigger pots and two separate pots for them. We also have more of those figs cuttings on the way. I also have a huge jar of brown turkey figs that are in a jar of water rooting in the kitchen that I will be transplanting out here as well. So we're gonna have lots of fruit in the coming years to enjoy the bounty. I always enjoy planting fruit regardless of whether I'm positive that I'm gonna live there forever or not. This is hopefully gonna be our forever home, but if there comes a time where we're asked to move, then we know that the next person will be able to reap the benefits of what we have sowed. And we can always transplant some stuff and take cuttings from lots of it. So there's never, never a bad time to plant fruit. You should plant fruit any chance you get. You like that butterfly garden, don't you, Liam? Yeah. 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 Oh, it's good when it rains. Yeah. But sometimes I want to take rain to me that it's the rain that's not. Oh, okay. Do you want to say goodbye to everybody? Goodbye. What do you say? What do you say? Um, Thank you for watching. No fear. See you next time. I'm doing the button here.